Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be finishing up our conversation on the color wheel by talking about the six harmonious color schemes and how we can use them in our own art practice. So, let's get started. The first color scheme we'll be talking about is a monochromatic color scheme. A monochromatic color scheme is a variation of one color plus black and white to create a range of tints and shades. Artists use this to play with value, high contrast, and low contrast. And it's also my suggestion for beginning artists who like to use photos to create several monochromatic paintings. You can do this by taking whatever photo you plan to work on digitally changing it to black and white, and then picking a color on the color wheel and trying to recreate the image. This helps train your eyes to see value instead of be distracted by color, and I find it extremely useful. Our next color scheme is called the analogous color scheme. Analogous colors are three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And it's important to note that an analogous color scheme is considered a low contrast color scheme. Now, this can be confusing, but if you think back to my video on values, we learned that contrast is just when you put two unlike art elements next to each other and they touch. Now, this can be values of light and dark, big shapes, small shapes, but it can also be in the form of colors. Because analogous colors are all similar and do not oppose each other, they're considered a low contrast color scheme. Now, that also doesn't mean that your art piece won't have any contrast at all, because we can play with contrast in other forms, but it does mean that the colors will only behave a certain way together, which can often create balance and harmony. Now that we've talked about a low contrast color scheme, we should talk about a high contrast color scheme. And my personal favorite, complementary colors. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel, and they create visual dynamics, intensity, and contrast, along with a plethora of other things. And as much as I would love to talk about it for hours and hours and hours, if you want to learn more, go ahead and check out my video specifically on complementary colors. Now that we've talked about complementary colors, we should talk about its cousin, split complements. A split complement is when you pick one color, look for its complement, but then end up picking the two colors on either side of that complement. For example, if you picked red, the two colors you would also be using are yellow-green and blue-green. Just like its cousin complements, split complements are also considered a high contrast color scheme. Now moving on to our next color scheme, we will be talking about the triadic color scheme. A triad is three colors that are evenly spaced apart from each other on the color wheel and create a triangle. The most common triad that we often think of is yellow, blue, and red, which are our primary colors. Now, triads can be a bit more challenging for the beginning artist because they tend to compete with each other, so finding balance can be a challenge. If you do decide to try a triadic color scheme, my suggestion is pick one color to be dominant and then try to subdue the other two colors by changing their values. Last, but certainly not least, we have the tetrad. A tetradic color scheme is two sets of complements, such as red, green, and orange, blue, and they create a rectangle on the color wheel. A tetradic color scheme does not compete with one another, but creates vibrancy and can come off aggressive due to the tension the complements create. So now you know the six harmonious color schemes and you can begin to apply them in your own art practice, whether you're changing the palette of a photo or if you're working in the abstract and trying to create a visual story through moods that colors produce. All of that can be achieved by thinking about what color palette you're using and how those colors work together. I hope you can use this in your own art practice, and if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more art education or see stuff from my own art practice, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.